Hey, what's up YouTube? My name is Bronwyn. I also go by B1 Makes on social media and such and this is a space that I use to talk about my all-consuming hobbies of knitting and sewing. Today's video is going to be more of what I would consider like a podcast format. So for me, the way I define like a YouTube like knitting podcast, at least from like the other knitting related content creators that I watch is uh, like a video that is longer than I'd say like 15 or 20 minutes. Um, obviously like what a podcast is is a kind of loose term, but just for me, it helps me to like figure out in my head what works categorically. So um, I am anticipating this to be a bit of a longer video, more of a podcast style format where I'm just going to talk through generally what I'm working on, go into details about each project, um, and that's going to be my main focus for this video. I wanted to start doing like more podcast format type of things on this channel and I do anticipate them to incorporate both like my sewing projects and knitting projects that I've been working on but I do consider myself to be like a pretty seasonal crafter or like seasonal knitter slash sewist so when the weather starts to get colder, I like to focus all of my energy on knitting. And then I find that in the warmer months, like especially the summer is when I do a lot of sewing projects. I just don't feel as much as a drive to knit in the summer. I don't know why, like I'll usually have like a very slow project going on in the background, but I think the winter and like fall, early spring, just like cooler weathered months is when I feel myself wanting to just like knit all the time and don't have as much as a, of a drive to sew. So a lot of the projects that I have going on right now are knitting related and I actually do have a lot of knitting projects and an FO going on right now. Just to walk through like what FO means and also what WIP means or work in progress because if you're new here or new to like knitting, um, those are terms that it took me a second to like figure out what they meant. So FO stands for finished object and that is like any just like knit, garment, accessory item that you have completely finished. Um, so that is a finished object or an FO. And then a whip or a work in progress is like quite literally just like a work in progress. So like a knit or, you know, it could be a sewing project too that you are like in the middle of creating but haven't finished yet. So when I say finished object or work in progress, that is what I mean. Those are like the loose definitions for those. And then FO and whip are the acronyms for those two terms. I also want to share before I dive in the sweater that I'm wearing. So this is something that I knit over the summer um, and it's this really pretty, pretty lightweight um, knit. I just like improvise self-drafted this one. I didn't really follow a formal pattern, um, but I knit it actually bottom up, which is kind of rare because I feel like usually I like to knit things top down. Um, but I did knit this one bottom up and I knit it in um, the yarn is Shiboy Billow, um, which is a half cotton merino and alpaca blend. So it is very soft, but very lightweight. I knit this on US 7 or 4.5 millimeter needles. And I think I showed it, but it has this really cool, just like garter stitch texture detail that I did in the sleeves that I really love and it has like this semi like boat neck not fully off shoulder but like wider neck um and I actually knit this intending it to be like a warmer weather knit um I'm like <laughs> standing up so you can see the bottom it's a little bit cropped but I knit this intending it to be a like warmer weather knit but it's actually been pretty warm I'm in Denver so it's been pretty warm in Denver and our apartment just gets like really hot because it has south facing windows. So um, I decided to throw it on today just cause I wanted to wear a knit for the video, but I needed something lighter because it's just like been kind of hot in here um, and the weather's just been pretty warm. Um, so that is the knit I'm wearing today. And so I wanted to start off this video by talking about my first finished object of 2024, which is this scarf, um, which is kind of crazy. I like didn't, fully realized until I just said it that this is like literally my first FO of the new year, um, which is wild to me because it is already February, which is okay. I feel like my knitting has been a little bit slower um, just like in the new year. One of my, or like really the only big garment project I've been working on currently, which I'll get to, has just 
been a pretty slow knit. So I've actually been working on a good amount of like accessories, kind of just like to supplement my larger garment that I've been working on. Um, but this is my first finished object. I finished it, uh, I think like about a week ago, and it is a scarf that I knit as a gift for my fiance. It's actually a Valentine's Day present. I did give it to him a little bit early. He's been telling me that he's wanted a scarf for a while, so I have planned for, I feel like since the winter started to knit him a scarf, um, but I was waiting on figuring out like what the perfect yarn would be and I was back and forth about if I wanted to find and follow a pattern or kind of just like improv knit a scarf on my own. Um, and I ended up just like improvising this one. It's a pretty simple construction. I literally just cast it on like 10 stitches and then knit back and forth in two by two rib. And I did include ed edge stitches just to make it a little bit cleaner on the sides. And if you don't know what an edge stitch is, basically it's like, I mean, it's like literally what it's called. It is a stitch on the edge of a knit just to make the sides look a bit neater. Um, and you make an edge, edge stitch by every single row. The first stitch of that row, you slip purl wise. And then the last stitch of the row you knit. And no matter like what, stitch texture you're working with that is what you do every single row first stitch slip last stitch knit um to get just a cleaner edge on you know whatever project it is you're working on especially if you don't plan on like picking up stitches or even if you do plan on picking up stitches it helps as like a nice guideline um and so that's what i did for this and then i knit this in a noro yarn i think the yarn itself is rika i think it's noro Rika yarn and it is a bulky weight yarn. Um, a single ball is 320 meters or 350 yards. So it actually was enough to make this full scarf that I think is a great length. It fits my fiance really well. I think it fits me really well too if I ever want to steal it. Um, and I just knit this scarf until I used up the entire ball. Um, and it, yeah, ended up coming out to the perfect length. It's, super cute um and i have been wanting to work with noro yarn for a while um and i actually found it in a yarn shop in new orleans um i don't think i've shared it on here before but basically my fiance and i used to live in new orleans like that's where we met and we still have friends there so we go back a lot to see people we try to do a trip at least like once a year and we were back there in January and there's this really cute yarn shop in the French Quarter called the Quarter Stitch and when we're there I like to try to stop by so we stopped by and I saw this Noro yarn and I loved the colorway. I just also like the self-striping on this yarn is so so pretty um, and since New Orleans is a very special place to us I was like you know what like this is perfect. Um, to buy yarn in New Orleans so it's not only cool yarn and something I like made for him but also has this like really special connotation of to a place that we used to live in and you know means a lot to us so that makes this knit extra special and just going back to talking about the colorway the colors in this are really gorgeous I don't know if the camera is picking it up super well but there is like this light baby blue in the striping, a light gray, this really pretty deeper blue, a darker gray, and they're all kind of a little bit like speckled too. Um, and then there's these little bits of brown. I think this is like a pretty brown shade as well. Um, and it's just this really cool self-striping yarn. The Nora yarn is a bulky weight, so I did knit this on uh, 10.5 US or 6.5 millimeter needles and um, it is single ply. So I will say a cool thing about single ply is a lot of times I find single ply yarn has a very interesting like schlubby texture to it. Um, I find that especially when it's like a bulky weight single ply sometimes like each piece of the strand is a little bit of like a different um, like a uh, weight or like um texture with to it than like other parts of the strand so it can make a knit look kind of a uh, schlubby which I like it does this scarf does have this like very funky texture to it the one downside of single ply though is I do feel like it is more susceptible to pilling um but because of that I like to knit 
accessories with it. So I've knit like a hat with single ply yarn before. Um, I've knit a scarf with single ply and I've often found that when I knit accessories with single ply, they don't get the same wear as garments. So they're less susceptible to pilling. Um, I don't love knitting like garments, like sweaters, cardigans, vest with single ply yarn, just because I feel like the wear that like garments on your body can get like causes pilling to happen more but when you're wearing something like on your head or a scarf that you're you know not wearing like all day long and is like rubbing up on things and all of that um they usually don't pill as much so i'm not too stressed about like how this will wear i just think because it's an accessory and not a garment um it probably won't get as much pilling um but i will update if like that ends up coming out differently than i anticipate um but so far it's worn really well my fiance has worn it a couple times and it's held up great and the other nice thing about this being a scarf and a two by two rib is it's flat enough and pretty easy to depill if need be but so far um there has been no pilling um so that's been really nice and this is just like a beautiful yarn i think i forgot to mention this but the noro yarn or like this type of noro the rika yarn is made up of a blend of wool alpaca and silk um, and so that also drew me to this. I have a bit of skin sensitivity to like things that are 100% wool and I think my fiance does a little bit too. We just find that like 100% wool can be a little rough and itchy on the skin. And I found that in the past when I've gone into yarn shops and I've seen Nora yarn, it's been very beautiful, but what I've seen has been 100% wool. And so I've always shied away from buying it just because I know that my skin does not love like full wool fibers. Um, so when I saw that this yarn in the quarter stitch was also part alpaca and silk, which for me are like very, very soft, um, non, like I don't have a lot of sensitivity with them fibers. I wanted to try it out because I was like, okay, great. Like, yes, there's wool in it, but I often find that when wool is blended with softer fibers that are less sensitive to my skin, like alpaca and silk um, or like merino, usually I don't have those same sensitivity issues. So I thought it would be a safe bet to get this yarn because of that blend. And so far my fiance has loved it. He thinks it's really soft. I even think it's softened up a bit after I washed it, um, which I feel like happens with a lot of fibers, but I think even after the wash, it became even softer. Um, and yeah, I'm just really excited about this one. I think this is just a great start to 2024. I think it's a great FO to be my first one of the year and I'm really, really happy about it and my fiance loves it. And I think by the time that I will have posted this video, I'll have like shared some pictures of this up on Instagram. So if you're cur curious and seeing some like more still photos of this scarf, go check them out on like my Instagram page. They should be up here by the time that I have posted this to YouTube. So now I'm going to get into my work in progresses of the new year. Um, I actually have three whips right now, which is a little bit crazy for me. I feel like I'm usually a monogamous, monogamous, monogamous knitter. Um, although, I mean, I will say like if I am, I try to keep two projects going at a time, but one as like a little more of like an intricate project, like something that's like a lace or cable knit, and one that's a pretty easy stockinette that's like an accessory. Usually I don't have two full on garments going at once. Like usually I'll have a garment and then a side accessory, and those are like my two interchangeable projects. Um, but I have three right now, which is kind of crazy for me. <laughs> but um, it also makes gives me a lot to talk about for this video. So my first whip that I have to show is the this beanie. This is the tall staple beanie pattern by New Wave Knitting. And it's it maybe hard to tell right now, but basically this is like the hat brim um, that I currently have done. And then I'm like knitting up the rest of the hat. Um, and I'm actually very excited about this yarn. It's in this really, really gorgeous green color. And I got it from Drops. Um, this is Drops Extra Fine Merino. And I'm knitting this hat on size 10 needles and the I'm holding the yarn double. So I think Extra Fine Merino is more like a DK weight. And so I'm holding it double to make this hat just a little bit 
chunkier and move by a little bit more quickly. And I, this is a super wash yarn um, and it's actually really, really nice. I don't always grab for super wash yarns, um, but I have really enjoyed working with this one. It is super, super soft. Um, the color is really, really beautiful and it has this really nice squish to it. Um, so it's been really fun to work with. I really like Drops yarn. Um, another plus of this yarn is that it is Ocotex certified. So there's no like harmful chemicals used in like the dyeing or making process. And I also just thought, thought this color was really gorgeous. Um, the big reason why I chose to work with this yarn is actually because of the color. Um, I couldn't really find any other yarn on Drops site that was this like exact shade of sage green. I think the shade is like literally called sage. Um, and so I it was very happily, pleasantly surprised when it showed up in the mail and I've really enjoyed this project so far. Um, if you're not familiar with New Wave Knitting or her actual name is Jeanette, um, Jeanette re releases like these really cool staple patterns that are all made to measure, but not just made to measure in terms of like putting your unique measurements in, but also made to measure in the sense that you can use any yarn and any size needle for like any of her patterns. Um, so this is like the tall staple beanie and basically what you do is you knit a gauge swatch and then you put your gauge swatch measurements into like her formula that she has in the pattern and you like do very easy math um, to figure out how many stitches you need to cast on based on your head circumference and then how many rows you need to knit based on like what your gauge is, um, which is super, super cool. It is a great way to stash bust. Um, it is a great way to be like, okay, I need, you know, a quicker project. I wanna knit a project on like 10 or six millimeter needles, but I like don't, want to deal with like going in the hunt to find the perfect project to match with that. So you can just be, look at her pattern and use, you know, whatever needle size, whatever yarn you want. And I just think it's a really cool, like awesome concept. Um, I actually tested this beanie last spring. So this is going to be my second one. Um, and it is a gift. I'm not going to get too much into that, but it is a gift, but this yarn is so pretty and so nice that I kind of want to buy some more to knit one for myself as well. Um, but this will be my second time working the tall steep staple beanie pattern. And I highly recommend checking it out if you're looking for an easy, fun, relaxing hat project. Um, it's a really good one and it's super cute too. My next work in progress is this pair of socks. Um, these are the vanilla socks by the crazy sock lady and they're my first ever pair of socks. I have never knit socks before so I'm super excited about these and I'm actually knitting them as a part of a sock knitting class. Um, so because I just like never knit socks before I found out that my local yarn store was doing a sock class and actually for Christmas my mom gifted me like taking the class for like this next month. I have really enjoyed the class actually just because I felt a little bit intimidated by socks so I like wanted to be able to knit them for the first time like with other people or with an instructor as like kind of guidance and these socks are also knit with a gusset which I was a little intimidated by and I haven't gotten to yet that's like my next step of these. Um, so I am like feeling extra grateful too that I'll have someone to ask questions if I feel like I'm like struggling with the gusset construction at all. But um, they've been really fun so far. I've been knitting them on these tiny, tiny sock needles. These are US one needles. I forget what the millimeter measurement is, but look how small they are. I literally feel like I am knitting with toothpicks. Um, it's insane, but um, I've actually knit on these before. I made a pair of the underwing mitts back in the fall, um, which I don't know if I've shared them on here, but I use these needles to knit the underwing mitts. So I already had these needles, so I decided to use them for this sock. Um, with this pattern, you have the option of either knitting in the round on small needles like these, or a knitting magic loop. Um, and while I actually do like knitting magic loop like over DPNs, um, I, 
will always prefer to do like a non magic loop method if possible. Um, and I think the only big difference of knitting with like magic loop versus knitting with like these needles is that um, with magic loop, you really don't have to worry about like slipping these top body stitches as you're working on the heel, but because I'm knitting in the round on these, I think I'm going to, in the next steps of this pattern, have to slip these bottom stitches as a part of like the top of the foot onto a piece of like scrap yarn or like a you know loose cord or something um, to hold them while I work on the rest of the heel. So I think that's the only big difference. Uh, the only other thing I can think of is I knit Continental and I have found that it is a bit more difficult to knit Continental on these tiny needles. Um, I just find my hand <laughs> cramps up quite a bit and I find myself knitting more like English or even like throwing style on these. Um, it's definitely not like the cleanest Continental knit. Um, and part of me wonders if I was knitting Magic Loop instead, if like those longer needles would make it like easier to hold while I'm knitting. So maybe if I knit my next sock, I'll try Magic Loop, but I, I don't know. So far I'm like liking it on these little needles in the round. It's been really fun. I totally get why sock knitting can be addicting. Um, I've been having a really, a, like just like a lot of fun with these and I'm actually very excited to dive into hopefully a couple more pairs of socks this year and also just getting more invested in like the sock yarns and colorways that are out there. I don't know, I feel like there's a lot of really cool, especially like indie dyed sock yarns that I'm kind of excited to explore. These socks I am knitting in Bear Paw sock yarn from the Farmer's Daughter Fibers. And this yarn is, I think it's 70% superwash merino, 20% yak, and 10% nylon. Um, and it's in this really gorgeous colorway called the Sapphire Empress. I don't know if the camera is picking it up super well, but there is like a slight variegation in the yarn because it is hand dyed and it just looks like really, really pretty, um, super, super gorgeous. So I think also just the slight variegation has made these really fun to knit up as well because I keep going wanting to see like how it'll turn out in terms of like the colors. Um, so I've really been enjoying this. The yak in this yarn, I will say, is not super washed, so I'll probably have to hand wash these, but they're really soft and really luxurious, and I can't wait to like knit the second one and be able to wear my first pair of socks. It's super exciting, so I've really been enjoying this project so far. Um, I actually, I need to like keep going on these because I think for our next class, I'm supposed to be up to the toe section, and I think I can, I have like a week to go, so I just need to finish the heel do like the foot part and then get to the toes. And I think I have time for that. So um, I need to get a move on that like this weekend. Okay, and then my final work in progress at the moment is the Haraboji cardigan by Egyo Knit. And this knit I started right around Christmas time. So I have been working on this for two months now. Um, it has been Definitely a labor of love, um, a very slow and steady project, but I have really, really enjoyed it. This sweater, or it's a cardigan. This cardigan is knit on uh, 4.5 millimeter or US 7 needles. So because of that, it is pretty slow moving, um, but not just because of the needle size, also because it has this very intricate cable pattern, which is a part of the entire thing. So you have these mock cross cables on it and then you also have this bigger cable going down like the whole middle of the cardigan and so because of that this has been very slow moving um but I've actually really really enjoyed the process I've talked about this sweater in a couple of my other videos but I just find cables to be very mentally stimulating so it's been a really nice kind of just like more of I guess a brainy knit because a little bit more thought has to go into it and I have finally finished the body. So both the sleeves, the whole body is done and all I have left is to do the ribbing. So I just have to do like the bottom ribbing, the ribbon on the side with the button bands and the ribbing around the collar, which honestly, after doing all these cables, seems like it'll be such an easy and quick feat. Um, I'll probably get it done maybe in the next week, fingers crossed if I can find the time. Um, 
and then I'll be finished and this will be my first finished garment of 2024 which is very exciting. I knit this sweater in Knit Crate yarn which is a company that is no longer in business um, but this yarn is made up of merino, alpaca, and surrey alpaca so it is very soft, very warm and it also has a little bit of like a kind of like fuzz. I wouldn't say it's a full halo but just a little bit of fluff to it. I don't know if the camera is really picking it up, but it has like this little bit of fuzziness that I think fills out the cables really nicely. And I'm just so excited to wear this. I know it's gonna be so comfy and warm and the cables give it this really nice squish. When I officially finish my Haraboji cardigan, I am planning to film like a whole video just talking about how the entire process was for me. Um, because I don't know, personally, I was a little bit intimidated by this pattern and it is kind of newly released. I think it was released like end of November. Um, so I feel like there are not a ton of resources out there about it yet. Um, one of the things that I, well, one, the cables, I mean, I've done a bunch of cable projects, so I'm not too intimidated by cables, but this sweater has a really unique construction where it's knit from one arm, across the body and then to the up through to the other arm so it's knit like cross body instead of top down or bottom up um which is like a very new concept to me i have never knit like a pattern that's been constructed that way before um and so i do want to like share a whole video when i'm like officially done with this just like breaking everything down what i learned from it some things that like i wish i had resources for when i started um but I think one of like the biggest things with this pattern is I think the original language that it was uh, like written in is Danish. I believe the designer is uh, wrote it in like Danish originally and I think it was only like tested in Danish. I do not believe it was tested in English. I think it was tested and then translated like once the testing period was done and i don't think that the english translation is as great as it can be um i compiled a bunch of notes along the way that i am planning to send over to the designer that is hopefully helpful like when i finish the project um but the big thing that really like stands out especially from like the translations is when you start working on like the first sleeve like when you start the pattern um Although I usually like to follow charts over like how the charts are like written out, um, you kind of do have to follow the writing instead of the charts when you're starting just to get like a feel or like a vibe for what you're supposed to be doing. And in the like written out section of the pattern, um, there are a couple points where there's supposed to be a K for knit, but instead there's an R. And I think it's because the R stands for like knitting in whatever the pattern's like first written languages. And so I will say like my biggest call out was I just had a lot of confusion trying to figure out like what does this R mean? Does it mean knit or like does it mean something else? And then obviously like the R wasn't in the keyword definition so I was a little bit confused. Um, I figured it out though one just by looking at the charts and being like okay like following the chart for this written section what makes sense and also because there is a another knitter that I follow on Instagram who we are like I feel like we're virtual friends. Um, we've like connected virtually through knitting on Instagram and she posted a story like I think back beginning of December before I started this being like hey I'm working on the Haraboji cardigan does anyone want to like loosely knit it along with me and I've been wanting to work on this pattern for a while so I reached out to her and I was like hey I would love to um so we kind of were like messaging back and forth about different like questions things like that um so shout out to Jazz I'll share her Instagram here um she was like such a huge help through this whole process um she helped me work out like a lot of like the pattern kinks that I was unsure about when I started um there was also just like a lot of confusion with just the wording for like how to do the mock cross cables I was a little confused about and like Jazz was a huge help. She sent me some videos of like what she was using or like thinking of when doing those and when I do like a whole video breakdown I kind of want to like walk through 
just how I did those crisscross cross cables because that was like the other thing that really stands out to me is like a big kind of confusion in this pattern. So that was just really nice to have someone to knit this along with and you know go back and forth with each other about like our triumphs and our trials and all of that. Um, so that also just made this experience very fun and enjoyable. And then the last part of this cardigan that's been just very cool about this knit is I think I talked about this in like my first ever video that I shared on here beginning of January. Um, I think it's my video titled like my first ever video, my knitting and sewing 2024 project plans. Um, and I talked a bit about these very funky antler buttons that I actually got at the Rhinebeck Sheep and Wool Festival in uh, Hudson Valley, New York back in the fall. And they're just like these very cool buttons. They're made of sheep horns. Um, they're special one because I got them at Rhinebeck. It was my first Rhinebeck. Um, I was with my mom and also they're just very cool and they antler buttons and they're unlike any buttons I've seen before. So when I saw them, I was like, oh my God, I need these. Um, but an issue that I encountered is that the pack of buttons that I got only came with four buttons and the business name and the website that's attached to the buttons is called like Cornerstone Fiber Biz. And I looked up the website, the website does not work. I searched far and wide on the internet, on Etsy, on Instagram, trying to find this company to get another button, could not find them anywhere. And I really wanted to use those buttons as the buttons on this cardigan. Um, this pattern calls for six buttons, but I thought if I knit this cropped, then I could try to squeeze the four buttons on. Um, I also kind of wanted to knit this cropped anyway because I've talked about this before, but basically in terms of like just what I like to wear, I either like my sweaters slash just tops in general to be a cropped length or like a very oversized length. Um, usually I don't love how like mid length things look on my body. I feel like they just kind of like cut me off in a weird way. Um, and this sweater I'd say sits at like more of like a mid length, like uh, length on me. So I knew I wanted to crop this um, just because to try to squeeze those four buttons and also just because that's the length I knew I would prefer a bit more. And I did succeed at cropping this. I was a little nervous about how I would go about doing that, but it actually went a lot more easier than I anticipated. Basically, instead of casting on the full number of stitches that the pattern calls for, I did five and then five, um, which chopped down the length quite a bit, um, but I think that it's going to end up looking really good. I think there's supposed to be like five centimeters of ribbing added to the bottom, and then also I think once this is blocked, it's going to end up being the perfect length. Um, my guesstimate is like 17 or 18 inches, which is like a great crop length for me. I feel like anything between like 16 to I'd say 18 inches for me is like a really nice cropped like fit on my body. So. I am really pleased about how I was able to crop this, but when I was working with those buttons, sort of trying to place them on the sweater once I had finished the body, um, trying to see how it would fit once the ribbing is added in, I came to the conclusion that my four buttons were not going to be enough. And while I don't think, or like I don't even like think, it's I definitely know I do not need six buttons, I do feel like I will need a fifth button. So I searched far and wide trying to find a antler button that matched the ones I already had from like a different business. And I went on Etsy and I was able to find an Etsy shop that sells antler buttons that look exactly like the ones that I have. So I reached out to the seller and I sent her a photo of my buttons and I was like, hey, here's my dilemma. I really need a fifth button. Um, the buttons that I have are a little bit mismatched and one of them is like significantly shorter than the other three. So I thought it would be kind of cute if the fifth button I got matched like that shorter button of the four that I have. So then like it kind of has this uniform but like not uniform because it's mismatched look to it. Um, so I sent her the picture of all the buttons. I sent her the measurements of the shorter buttons and I was like, let me know like what size I should be choosing in your shop and I will buy a button from you. Can you match them up? And she was so nice. She went above and beyond with this whole button dilemma and she said, hey, here is my address. 
mail me the buttons that you have and I am going to compare your buttons to my buttons so I can choose one of my buttons that is like the perfect fit so that all of your buttons look unified in terms of like color. Um, the other really kind thing she's doing is she noticed that the holes drilled in my buttons like where the thread would go through to attach them are a lot wider than she usually drills the holes in her buttons so the button that she's going to send to me as the fifth she is going to drill the holes so it matches up with the drilled hole distance in the buttons i sent her and then the last thing she's doing is she is shaving down the edges of the buttons that i sent her so they're like a little bit more cleaner probably have less of a chance of getting caught on like yarn when i'm wearing it and I am just like so excited about this interaction. Shout out Cheryl, her Etsy shop is called The Woodsman's Wife. And it's just like, I don't know, it's some very wholesome, I feel like, internet crafting connection. Um, I, you know, she just went above and beyond and I'm so happy and just blown away by the interaction. Um, and very excited to receive my buttons back and be able to put them on this knit. I think that little story is also just going to make this project even more special. Um, and yeah, it's just been such a wholesome crafting internet stranger situation. <laughs> um, so I'm like very excited about that and very like heart warmed by the whole experience. So I especially cannot wait to finish this knit. I'm so close to being done and that should be the end of the button saga. Obviously when I get them returned to me and I finish this, I will show you all what the buttons look like and how it ends up, but I think it's going to be a very positive ending and I'm just very, very thrilled about the whole thing. <laughs> So those are all of my knitting projects that I currently have going on. Um, if you listened and watched through this whole thing, thank you so much. I really appreciate you being here. I hope this was enjoyable. I hope you learned something. Um, or if you didn't learn something, at least just like had a fun time watching this. Um, if there are any projects that like you are currently working on, please share them with me in the comments. I always love to hear what other people are, you know, working on. Um, and, you know, that allows me to discover new patterns and what else is out there and things like that. Thank you so much for watching. Like, comment, subscribe. Feel free to follow me on Instagram. And I hope you all have a lovely rest of your week. And I will see you next Thursday. Bye.